replication is very intriguing to me. I, uh, I'm interested in replication. We don't know a lot about it, uh, its accuracies, uh, but we try to learn as we go along. And so I started this project, and really it's all because of this cast right here. I have four casts here. The, these three on the right are from the Wenatchee site. These two are from the east site, and this Rutz, Rutz is from the west site. And this is a cast of a Clovis biface found in St. Louis by Donnie McGinnis. And it clearly has uh, Clovis technology written all over it. The purpose of this personal project was to see if I could substantiate with evidence any reason why these nubs are on these Clovises from that region and the time. This one also has nubs on it and this is from being reworked. This was a little bit thicker when it was in its new form kind of like this. Um, but all of these, including the ones from the Wenatchee poster, uh, all exhibit a continual look of being worked or reworked. In other words, there were many stages, I believe, before this. And I also believe there were many stages after this. And this one could be an example of a stage after and this one also and up front I'd like to say that this video probably won't appeal to all of all of the viewers there'll be some people that are interested in overshot technology and some people that are interested in replication and some people just want to watch people hit a rock and this is really not it's not a how-to video it's more of a documentary of the beginning of the, my thought process uh, all the way through until I felt I got sufficient results to kind of uh, give evidence to my claim so if you're not interested in the dull boring parts of the theory behind this then this may may be a little dull to you. Uh, you know, maybe one of these days I will do a how-to video on this, but at this point I, I don't claim to be anywhere near the level of the guys that did this quality of work. I'm very new at uh, this technology and I'm trying to learn as I go and uh, hopefully the better I, or the more I work at it, the better I will get. And I have exhausted a substantial amount of rock in trying to do this project. So I've, <clears throat> but that's okay because I uh, I feel that you can't learn without making mistakes and without breaking rock. So that's what I did. Also, I'd like to show this. This is a poster of the East Wenatchee Clovis site in Washington, and it shows several very fine examples of the Wenatchee style Clovises. And if you have seen this, then you are probably already familiar with its attributes, but there's a lot of these are, very, are asymmetrical and have asymmetrical properties. Um, and there's these nubs sticking out in places and we don't know why there are people who are there are ideas out there or speculations as to why but uh, obviously no one really knows for sure and I don't claim to know either but the idea of this project was to See if I could figure out why the nubs were there. Were they put there on purpose or did they just end up there or did they have some utilitarian use or or what? 
they made tools they had to have tools and uh, there's evidence that shows that they've carried bifaces and preforms and clovis points a very long distance from quarry sites and some even show evidence like this one here this ruts was this was carried around for a very long time um, with my naked eye I can distinguish about three different patinas on this there's one very old the oldest on here you can see in the flute in the overshot going across there as a matter of fact this is the only overshot left on this cast uh, and it shows evidence of rework along every portion of the edge and possibly even the base or actually there is some from the base because you can tell in the different levels of patina but the way I think that these ended up on there is say for example you get to this point to where it looks like this well but the Clovis people, if they were traveling a lot, and they only wanted the highest quality of stone out there, and they didn't know where the next quarry site was going to be, then I feel that it's possible that they wanted to utilize every bit of uh, the stone available. So if they made a sharp edge, then they would use that sharp edge and not let it go to waste. <clears throat> and one of the ways that they did that is by knocking usable flakes off of a core. I call I, I call these bifacial cores in that the flakes that came off to produce this was used as a tool and I believe it's possible that the idea may have came from core technology conical cores or whatever they're called because they planned these blades and I have a bunch of them in that bucket but every one of these blades are planned to be an overshot it helps keep natural convexity in the core and if that idea to get a tool in this case it was a blade flake from a core then to get the tool off of there and use the tool until it it's expired its sharp edges are gone they rework it and then finally it makes it gets to some discard stage and they throw it away. Well, if you apply the same technology to biface, like the Clovis, the Wenatchee Clovis stuff, then I, I feel that they're very similar. Um, this is an example of a, a Clovis core that I made out of raw Burlington using a punch uh, this was uh, a long time ago when I made this but there's not some of the best overshots on this but uh, you know this is an ex example of a Clovis core and they c could use these tools or use the all of these flakes as tools they wanted to maximize all of the flint that they quarried as much as possible and this is an example this was a just a little a small uh, root beer nodule and I just grabbed a hammer stone and tried to uh, just make tools out of the whole thing with as little amount as waste as possible and you can see that that's really all the waste from that rock and I got several tools from this some of the overshots broke but 
now there's the core and I've seen triangular cores that look just like this that were small about this size but they they had flakes running it was more of a, a triangle shape instead of square like this but I think this is a good representation and even this wouldn't have been discarded right away it has some sharp edges on this and even more can be taken off of it and they may have used this for a one or two time use or something and then discarded it but they have all the rest of these as tools that they could use there's sharp edges on them and if they don't know where the next quarry site is then why would they throw away the the sharp portion of the flake some of the nubs on what I have made so far might might be a little uh, exaggerated I'm not real sure but what I have realized is that when you take a flake it leaves a ridge and that ridge can be taken as an overshot flake later on so for example this this one here you can see a nice prominent ridge across there and across there and even across here but if you if a person would do some rework along in here and here as the edge gets dull and here and here and basically everywhere but there's a but where the ridge is then a nub just it, it gets developed there and uh, just like in the Wenatchee's so if you look on some of the original stuff you what I've noticed is everywhere there's a nub there's a ridge and as this gets reworked and they build convexity in this point and get the contours just right for the overshot then that's what's left are these nubs this one here is uh, basically it's ready to take a couple of flakes um, this one in the video I decided I was gonna leave the way it was but later on I decided to rework it a little bit I kinda wish I hadn't have but like this here is not this nub is useless I should have just removed it but back this way and taken a left a sharp edge there but the rest of these nubs are going to come into play as this point gets reworked and I can you know eventually I'll take a flake an overshot across here and it'll spread out to that nub and that nub and it brings this back in line <clears throat> and then whenever the point gets the edges get dull again they do a little bit more rework on it and they just repeat that process until the opportunity comes to take an overshot and they take the overshot um, it might be worth mentioning too that on the basis of this cast and this cast there's evidence of rework from the margins on both of these which leads me to believe that they weren't ground the bases weren't ground and if the bases weren't ground then uh, it must not have been hafted and the rework especially on this close the, every bit of the rework on both margins on both sides are intrusive on the flute and if there was something hafted up this flute then I don't think that these scars would intrude the way that they the way that they have I think there would be you know possibly some mini little hinge terminations where the flute tried to terminate underneath the hafting if the bases were reworked on them and they weren't ground and the, then maybe they weren't hafted then what is the reason for the flute I know some people well that that's definitely a question especially with these larger ones is why were they fluted